welcome to the Indie Music Plus podcast, everyone. My name is Jojo Keys. This is a special edition, and we're live on Blab. Uh, we did our last podcast on Blab, and it went really well. So I decided that we're going to start doing some more with some special editions and some uh, with some marketing tips, you know, uh, recording tips, all kinds of stuff dealing with indie musicians and the challenges that we face these days. So today I'm sitting here with Mr. Chris Windley, who was one of my mentors uh, about four or five years ago when I started out in this weird, wonderful, horrifying, magical world of social media and digital marketing. And um, he is, well, I'm going to let you tell him, tell, uh, tell everybody about yourself, Mr. Windley. Just a oh, little gosh. brief. <laughs> Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, is it four or five years? Doesn't time fly? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think how we met, Joe. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I well, obviously, one of the things I remember most when we met was the amazing social media presence you had, man. You know, if we could just indulge in in saying that for a little bit, you know, that was the thing because I I can't remember. I think at that time you had something like. Well, is it forty thousand or something on Twitter or something like that? You know, I know you've uh, gone through that, out of gone through that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, but it, it was huge, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, and and I think if I may say it as well, Joe, jo, just I will talk about myself in a minute. But just I want to talk about you for a minute. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, and I think you know. The other thing that stunned me at the time was the engagement that you got, you know, which was co completely incredible. I thought completely incredible. Yeah. You know, there was a few things you were doing at the time. Oh, I'm just trying to remember what the, you had a couple of tricks, didn't you, at the time yeah. that would uh, get unbelievable numbers of comments. Yeah. <laughs> unbelievable. Oh, <laughs> It was going great. I mean, what was that? He almost just got to be too much. So yeah. Stop it because I had other things going on. Yeah. 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 So, so um, yeah. So I think I, I was just going to say that, you know, without talking too much about myself, you know, I think one of the, one of the things that we got started on was sort of like um, what, you know, we call like the digital marketing ecosystem. Because I think at the time you were probably, you know, massively into social media, particularly Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. but probably not so much into the websites. And obviously, we'll talk more about websites in our list, won't we? You know. Yeah. But I think the if that's true, isn't it? And then I and I think we um, we had common ground in uh, in our belief that probably WordPress was the right platform to um generally to, to base things on yeah 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 oh, cool. and uh yeah so uh i guess you know without going into like you know massive detail on myself i suppose one of the things is to say is that um i've always since i started digital marketing been focused actually on digital sales <laughs> which is I, I say that to people quite a bit you know that because um, I think it's sort of imp important uh, that uh, I that I do focus on leads and conversions and sales rather than marketing yep um, which is why I, which is why I, I, I call myself a, a digital sales expert rather than a digital marketing expert um, Another reason for that is it's easier to rank in search for digital sales experts rather than digital marketing experts. Yeah, well, but... videos. <laughs> so, so I think that's probably, I don't know, unless you want to say, um, you know, another, uh, probably the other thing is that um, that's relevant, I guess, is, of course, as you know, that I've been involved in a number of uh, digital music related startups. Um, and certainly one of those gave us that was bfm mm -hmm. and uh, one of those gave us gave us massive um well well we really we really made an effort to understand the problems of the indie musician we really did i mean to the to the extent that we 
that we work with a number of them closely. Yeah. You know, uh, very closely. Uh, no, you know, so, we, so we ended up. Sorry, Joe. I was going to say, keep talking, but I want to have Daniel call in now because he's the one of the other founders of BFM, correct? Yeah, br- yes, exactly. I see Daniel uh, lurking there. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, bring Daniel in, and that, that's an appropriate time. Go on, and uh, cert- certainly, um, yeah, we. Uh, I mean, we ended up uh, in some cases what we call digitally managing. Um, a number of musicians looks like he's trying to get a seat but yeah, Dan- not being able to sit down or something your daniel you may need to mess with your digital or with your um browser settings in the top left you have to allow your camera and microphone so if you don't get in a minute or two i'll x you out and then you can call back in when you maybe you have it so it's pretty simple you just got to know where to look yeah okay. yeah so i think that um you know, perhaps that's the relevant thing I think to say is that that, you know, that experience there, um, we, you know, we never wanted to manage the musician from an overall perspective, but we did end up managing them from a, a, a digital perspective. You sure talk um, about it, I know. So that, I think that gave us a lot of experience there. Yeah. yeah I know you, I know you taught me a lot. You and but, Michael Nelson who's also here. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, we could start talking about some stuff then, huh? We have a little bit of a layout. Yeah, for the first one. Um, yeah, I sent you a little list. So, like the first thing that I wanted to talk about, and this is again focused towards musicians or people who are working with musicians. One second, please. Okay, sorry. That is. <laughs> um, is that um to start simple so like i know when i met you for example and mr nelson and even daniel um i was all over the place you know i was doing some funder some uh kickstarter type stuff to get some funds for some projects that i was working on and like you said my engagement was really high which trying to get back to that point to this day because i you know life happens and stuff and um you know i've been focusing on indie music plus but i remember you know, the, one of the big things I learned right off the bat was to get organized, have a plan, you know what I mean? And keep a schedule, basically, was like kind of the big things I came out of it, came out with the with the sessions that we had. Um, and so, like, you know, there's a lot involved in those three things. But, like, for this session, um, like, the starting out part, we might as well just start there. You know, like, what would you say is probably, I don't know, keep a short list like the the top three things that you would say from your perspective as a professional digital sales marketer um is the top three things that mean you know somebody who's just starting out should do as a trying to market their music online well uh, yeah okay i i think you know um uh, uh, simplification actually it's interesting you talk about simplification (laughs) because I think that's one of the things that I've really been trying to do, um, you know, certainly in recent months and years, right, is to try and simplify, you know, some of this stuff down and, and give people like a short action plan. And uh, so an example of that is, is what I call the BPM approach, which you've, you've heard me talk about before, which is brand presence monetization. Right. And and one of the reasons that I talk about that is because I found that that really does resonate with people. Right. If I if we talk about if we talk about things, you know, in that order where, you know, first of all, and this, uh, uh, by the way, applies not just to musicians. This applies to anybody and everybody. Right. But if you first of all, you know, establish your brand what your brand is going to be yeah and that and i think of i mean you know how important that is in the music world um and who's like succeeded there and who hasn't succeeded mm-hmm. you know um and and it's the same you know i'm working a lot with individuals at the minute and there's just such a massive difference between those individuals that have got a clear 
personal brand and those that haven't you know they're still they're still trying to work out you know who they are you know so i think you've i think you know these days you have got to start there you know you have got to start with your brand right um and you know and you've got to I don't know what term to use, but you've got to like deep dive on it. But yeah, somebody's agreeing here. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and uh, yeah. So, so you know, you've got to really, you've got to get into the detail of that. You know, uh, re I mean, really get into the detail. Um, and you know, I think another thing that I've found as well, not particularly with musicians, but with individuals, is they've got to believe that they can be a brand and they don't actually believe it you know and then you go and you say and then you talk to them and you say hey tell me about yourself you know tell me what you've done and you know i mean I, obviously i know your background and if i was to have this conversation with you you, you know we'd blow everybody away <laughs> by what you've done you know completely blow everybody away oh, and you know yeah and then they'd say, you know, but anyway, but you talk to people about that, you know, and they'd tell you that they've done all these things, right? And you'd just go, oh, wow, that's amazing, you know. And they'd go like, really, you think that's amazing? They'd go, oh, I really just think that's amazing, you know. You know, you're just like so um, underappreciating yourself, you know. Um, and so, y y yeah, you know, so, so, so firstly, you need to like, Basically, you need to start loving yourself and appreciating yourself, you know, and uh, and then yeah, yeah, you know, and believing, you know, and believing you could actually be a brand, you know, yeah. and um, and hey, Daniel, it looks like you're just Hello. about there. <laughs> yeah, from good. Israel. Yeah, so uh, how are you? I'm nice, thanks. It took me a little bit to figure out how to get in. <laughs> Tricky at first. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you're there now. Good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I think you've really, yeah, you know, so, so actually, you know, one of the things I find, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, again, I'm not talking about musicians, I'm talking about individuals uh, to a large extent, is, is that it turns out to be a mindset thing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as, as, as much as it does anything else, you know, because unless they're in the right mindset of believing in themselves and believing that they can be a brand they don't get anywhere you know um so once you've done that you know then obviously uh ho hopefully uh we would you know that, that, that they get past that if you like and they go okay i believe i can be one and now this is what i'm going to be mm -hmm. you know i know and then, so once and once they go on oh i know i just know looking go back on, um i sort of just as, you know my name jojo keys i sort of had that idea from the very beginning but just i know what i learned from you in the beginning sort of consolidated it and cleared it up i guess well again you see i think one of the things is joe is like when you look at it from the outside right to i mean to me you always had a hugely powerful brand hugely powerful you know to me and i think anybody that came across you anybody that came across you would immediately see that but maybe you didn't see it as much you know <laughs> you know and also also like you say right and, and 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 you know i can talk um very personally about this because i've been i've been through that journey myself you know where life was complicated and i was doing loads of things and i couldn't actually decide what how to brand myself right mm -hmm. and you get like you get all these reasons don't you you know what i mean joe you know you right. get all these reasons where you're basically saying well you know i'd really like to just call myself jojo keys or chris windley or whatever it is right but i can't because there's this and there's that and the, you know the other and you give yourself all these like you know reasons why you can't do it um but hopefully eventually you get to the point where you go actually you know i think i can 
you know. Yeah, totally. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's one of the things you know that when Michael and I were talking to you, Joe, you know, we could just see it. We're like going, Joe, Joe Keys, man. You're like Stella. <laughs> You know, as far as we can say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, like, but it's true. When I when I first came out with my album, okay, so just a quick short story. When I came out with my album last year, a little over a year ago, in like August or September or whatever, I got um an, a, a sort of a indie label offer, um, but I decided not to take it because I wanted to kind of just keep doing it on my own because they weren't going to be able to offer me very much more than I was going to be able to do on my own for what I wanted to do at least. So then I got a little busy yep. and I got a, I got a job doing social media for a company, a uh, big company where I was like managing 20 Pinterest accounts or whatever. So I learned a lot, but I'm coming back to it. And like everything you're talking about with the engagement and all that stuff, it's like, I'm sort of like still gaining ground because I had like a whole stuff, bunch of stuff going you know, and then now it's like not as much. <laughs> so it's like you have to just keep doing it. You know, you got to keep going. I kind of went off t- off topic there for a second, but uh... no, no. But I, 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 I think what I would say. Go on, Daniel. Sorry, I just would like to to add uh, another aspect. When we are talking about uh, branding and digital marketing and all this stuff, uh, musicians uh, have have to decide not only to brand themselves, uh, but to dedicate their life to their career, which means that uh, all the virtual stuff, all the digital stuff, digital stuff is one aspect of their career. And um, I think that a lot of musicians may find it very difficult to move forward in their career if they are not digging around, if they are not meeting the real people and the real fans, and uh, then to integrate uh, the real life activities uh, into the virtual activities and then uh, vice versa. Uh, one without the other, it just doesn't work. And, uh, we saw it also in our experience in certain uh, in, in certain cases that you know I don't I won't tell names, but it happened that uh, virtual uh, existence was very uh, uh, presence was very nice, but without gigs, without making it real, it just won't work. That's so true, actually, Daniel. That is so true. Uh, um, it's like one of those. It's like one of those things, isn't it? You know, uh, you know, either do it or don't do it. <laughs> either do it or don't do it. Now, okay, yeah, you know, uh, and you know, if you're gonna do it, go all in. You know, and uh, uh, otherwise, it, it won't work. You know, it just. You know, you'll always be a pretend brand. You know, you, you won't be, you'll never be like the real thing. And, uh, and of course, we know that when we're talking about indie musicians, they've got a day job as well, probably, you know. So actually, you know, they have to be this dual personality, don't they? You know, where they're, uh, you know, which actually I think they do pretty well most of the time, you know, but where they're, they're this when they're in the day job and they're th- then they're this, you know, when they're out gigging and whatever. But I think Daniel's exactly right there. And, and that, again, does not just apply to musicians. It applies to um, everybody, you know, that uh, that I come across and that, you know. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a massive fan of fake it to make it, you know, but in, you know, that phrase, <laughs> you know. But I myself, though, is making it, you know. You have to see yourself as making uh, it. You have to visualize yourself. Yeah, exactly. Although I was making it. Yeah, ex- exactly. You have to, exactly, right? And of course, if you are indeed, you know, holding down a day job, um, as well as, yeah, exactly, exactly, Dawn. Um, I just want to see that, yeah, as, as Yoda says, like, you know, do or or not <laughs> do, there's no try. She's absolutely right, you know, that... that um, I think that, you know, that is the real key. And uh, yeah, so like, you know, going back, you know, obviously indie musicians, right, have got a day job as well, right? And, uh, you know, now I think if... Sorry? I I said I still teach piano full time, so, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you see, actually, let me ask... Sorry, Chris, and you're like a guy, Joe, because uh, 
you are, your day job is music. A lot of That's the thing is, like, yeah. And, and yep. at the end of yeah. the day, I think that the success of uh, uh, success of musician can uh, the success of musician can be measured by uh, the relationship between the income from the day job and the income that he managed to make, uh, make or she managed to make uh, through uh, music. Yeah, my goal is always yeah. to have a yeah. related activity to make my living off of. I don't have to be a big rock star or anything, but you know, music. Music found me. I didn't really find it. It's a family thing. So, and it's, and you know, so I need to have multiple streams of income. And, you know, I just want them all to be music because, because when I have to punch a clock at a, like a fast food place or a restaurant or something, I'm not a nice person. <laughs> no, exactly. I, I mean, that's, that's a key point, isn't it? You know, which again is a general thing that I'm sure that a lot of people that are in this lab will agree with. You know, uh, at least you're doing your passion, yep. Joe. Where, the, where there's a lot, a lot of people that, you know, uh, are like suffering during the day because they're doing something, as you say, completely different and mind-numbing or whatever, and even you know, like, but at least you're... You know, even when I wasn't doing um, music per, like, JoJo Keys or original music and even my other band that I was in in my early 20s as, as you know, LP Outsiders, I was always had a day job as much as I possibly could so that I could do my music career, you know, or further my music career. And even the even the bands that I was in wasn't necessarily bands that I wanted to be in. It was bands so that I could pay my bills and network with other musicians to further my music career. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm cu I'm a bit curious actually now, Joe. I mean, like, so when you're, I mean, obviously, as, as Daniel says, you're lucky that you're teaching piano during the day, right? But but do do you do you sort of like smother? Or cover up JoJo Keys during the day? Uh, well, I, I work on Indie Music Plus right now, so I get a bunch of orders in and stuff, and do you know? I have to, I'm constantly vlogging because of that. I'm also doing it. I mean, <laughs> sorry about the dog. <laughs> I'm going to sort that now. <laughs> uh, well, I'm constantly, you know, working during the day um, on Indie Music Plus, but as so I'm always double branding myself um, as the owner of Indie Music Plus, but then people check out my website or my About Me page or whatever. They see that I'm a musician, you know, and then I have my own album out. I have my own website. I've done this and this and this. And they're like, okay, well, this guy's legitimate. And if their musician is looking for a prom promotion or something, they'll go back to Indie Music Plus and check out the promo packages we have and how, you know, I'm not trying to rip people off. I really just want to give people an affordable platform, you know, to be able to be seen on and stuff. So, so Daniel, you're doing, yep. why, why don't you tell us just a brief little bit about that since you're just sitting here nice and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, BFM uh, is a social music service. Uh, essentially it started with, uh, quite a simple but very cool feature uh, it started with it, it collects uh, all the music that you see in your news feed which means that it is music uh, shared by your friends it collects it collects it and uh, arranges it in a in an automated playlist it's kind of a personalized radio station based on the music that you and your friends share uh, on top of it, it uh, BFM knows to how to recognize your your uh, music, uh, your taste in music, and to recommend new stuff uh, to you in this uh, personalized uh, playlist. Nice. Uh, with time, we added to BFM uh, also BFM channels, which are based on um, uh, musicians' Facebook pages, and shared there. Uh, it's of those. Uh, so, so it takes a, a broader, broader choice of music and uh, it's kind of a full page with uh, your fans to this channel. Uh, we also have a few more features that support the social uh, side of the application, like the uh, possibility to send messages to your friends, get messages from your friends, which messages in songs, not uh, text only messages. But it's just like if I listen to if i suddenly listen to some culture club maybe i will say something to you just to remind you uh good old times <laughs> head back to channels for a moment and indicated um uh 
when you connect your Facebook page as a musician and uh, essentially build a channel in, a, in a, a BFM, one of the things you get is uh, indicated ads, which is uh, the revenue from the ads is shared with the musician. That's the point there. So, uh, so this BFM channel uh, is not only you know the tool for engagement; it also becomes a source of income. Yeah, which I'm. Okay. In- it's a very simple concept. It, 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 it happens automatically, and it's a very simple concept. It just makes money. That's all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cool. I like the. That's all it should do, you know. Yeah, it's benefiting me too because I have it on my on my indie music plus site too. So, yeah, as well. So I'm enjoying it. All right, so let's just uh, move on a little bit. We've been talking about the same thing for a while. So we we're talking about starting simple and figuring out who you are, basically. Um, yeah, kind of some other things that go into that. And I was talking about getting organized. Um, making lists is a big key. Like so, like as far as like where you want to be, what you want to promote, you know, so make a list of, of either all the social media sites out there that you, that, that you can possibly be on and then go through and check them off, you know, by starting a profile um, or pick like the top three, four or five. Cause at first it's extremely overwhelming when you're starting to try to get heard online and, you know, <clears throat> get your music heard. So the, um, so, you know, but you have to start the social media these days. It's just, it's just required. Um, I know when I first started, um, I had my personal Facebook page and I w- didn't want to tour anymore. Um, I didn't want to play gigs as Jojo keys necessarily, but I wanted to start my brand as Jojo keys. And I wanted to start writing music as Jojo keys. So got on Facebook, you know, type, 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 <laughs> excuse me. Um, you know, uh, listen to my music, listen to my music, listen to my music, listen to my music. Hey, I'm writing music, listen to my music. And, you know, that got old really quick. And then I realized that, you know, it can only reach basically, you know, your friends or because, you know, people are weird about on Facebook who they're in contact with and stuff. And then, so I just started, well, I'm going to go. You, you froze, uh, Jojo. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know what's yeah. happened to Joe there. Well, oh, he's gone. <laughs> okay. Well, we're still here. Oh, let's just go. Let's party. Yeah. Well, actually, what I, was going to, what, I, yeah, what I was going to do is just pick up really there and say, obviously, once you've got your branding sorted out, uh, then obviously you can roll it out across everything can't you and um that's the really important thing is that you've got consistency across you know all your social media your website everything um oh, you're so right so, about it, uh, by the way chris one of the things yeah. that uh, are so simple and people are getting it wrong on social media is a uh, profile uh, photo and uh, yeah. there's a claim that i personally believe in that all your social media account has to have the same photo. And it is very important because yeah. it is the way that people recognize you. Recognize yeah. you. Yeah, well, it was funny, actually, because I was talking to a musician today. Uh, oh, OK, I just got a message from Joe there that uh, he had a PC fault. Well, at least at least the blab kept going. That's good. It's a, fault, a fault tolerant, obviously. Yeah, I was talking to um, a musician just today and I hadn't really, you know, looked at um, his presence, you know, which I did just by Googling him. Um, And I said to him, actually, I said, you look great, (laughs) you know, uh, because uh, as you as you're saying, Daniel, this this actually the same image kept coming up on, on pretty well you know, every platform that he was on. Um, I mean, he didn't have actually, you know, a web blog, but he had an about.me. And, um, but, uh, you know, uh, I mean, he would, he had, you know, page one and page two of Google were all his results when you Googled his name and everything was consistent. You know, you're, you're so right. And I, there definitely may be something in that. And to have, 
there's somebody I'm working with at the minute and uh, we're about to change her image, you know, and we're like looking for a new image for her, literally, you know, and, um, and yeah, and I think you're right. It needs to be the same image, you know, on every platform or, or, or probably that would be the default, wouldn't it? You know, it's the same image unless you want to give us a good reason why it's not. Yeah, yeah. The, the people, so, uh, the, the musicians, has to understand that have to understand that when they start their career, almost no one knows who they are. So uh, yeah. when you put an effort into uh, the digital marketing, you need to understand that you're getting people are getting used to your image, your visual. And if you are bringing a lot of different photos as uh, representative photos, you have a problem. People just simply won't recognize you, you know. And, 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 and not necessarily they will connect your photo on Facebook to your photo on Twitter. On the other mm-hmm. hand, when you have, you know, it maybe doesn't have to be exactly the same photo, but it has to be something that uh, when I look at it, and I saw your photo in other social media websites, Mm. I recognize this. I recognize you, and and yeah. uh, and, and and that's that's one of the things that uh, you know. Uh, on, on one hand, you want to to go, you know, to get known, but you have to understand where you're standing at, at a certain moment. Nobody knows who you are, and you're one of tens of thousands of people, you know, that are trying to make it, or one hundreds of thousands, and within your social environment. There are at least 10 more bands that are trying to make it, make it just like you. So, yeah. you know, you have to find a way to stand, you know, stand up here to, to be different in a way. To yeah, I, I it. mean, I completely, yeah, I completely agree with you, Daniel. I think you're absolutely right, particularly important during the early stages. You know, maybe later on you can have different images of yourself if you like but at the beginning um you know i think it's a really good point i'm just thinking about somebody else that that i know who's you know who's been like posting about how she has business cards and they have this and she has the image of us on a business card right her photo on her business card and uh you know that's the same as the photo as the, as the image that you'll see online and on her Twitter site and all the rest of it, you know, I think that's really quite an interesting point, actually. Um, how, how you know how far you go with that, because you know certainly I've been preaching or I, or I do preach uh, consistency. Hey Joe, welcome back. Yeah, but I mean the good news there was it all just carried on, good. which is fantastic. Yeah. So. I missed um, you. Yeah. Yeah. So we. We tried to we tried to pick up where you left off, Joe, and then me. <laughs> I'm like in the middle of talking, and all of a sudden my screen goes blank, and I'm like, "All right, I got a brand new computer, and it does this at least like once every two days. It, I'm right in the middle, of, you know, everything that I'm doing, and it just, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, well, like that's 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 not good. It's a brand new computer, and it does that. But still, and I think yeah. it's Windows 10, honestly. I think it has something to do with Windows 10. Oh, yeah. Well, now you've made me even more nervous now because, uh, yeah, I would, you know, look, looking at a new computer or something for the new year, and uh, which I, which I think, you know, I might get for a Christmas present than that. And I was like thinking, I don't think I want Windows Ten. <laughs> you know, but anyway, I really like it. That's the thing. It's just still a little buggy. It's still a little buggy. So exactly, that's exactly my point. That's why I say to everybody. That's why I don't want it when it first comes out. You know, because it's buggy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, so you talk about so actually, not. Joe, I don't. Yeah, well, did you? I don't know whether you picked that up actually, but I think Daniel raised um, what well, at least we think is a good point anyway, um, which which was how important it was probably, you know, early on in a in a band or a musician's career, to have like almost a single image um, that they you know that that is everywhere. Because we were talking about, you know, consistency of the brand on all platforms, and Daniel made what I thought was an e- the excellent point, you know, of saying, yeah, and particularly important in the early days, 
when you're trying to get somebody to recognize you, you know, that, that the image be the same. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's where we, that's where we sort of picked up and we were basically exploring around that. Um, I was on a blab not too long ago, and this is something that I do and I, I agree with completely. It's sort of the same now in a sense that you have to, you know, on all your different social profiles, you should have, um, sort of the same picture or similar looking picture so that people know that it's you, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, so you just have to have like, uh, yeah. What, what's the word I'm looking for? A consistent brand image. But then, yeah. then, you know, yeah, yeah. do whatever, sell whatever you want, I guess, you know, as long as people trust you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, I think it's a well-made point, you know, well-made point. So, so I think we was where we were sort of getting to was saying, well, okay. Cause I think you were talking about, you were moving on to um, building the social media, you know, platform. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, and, and and basically we're saying yeah that's fine uh or, or at least i say anyway yeah that's fine go build your social media platforms but make sure that your your image and your brand is consistent across all of them yep. you know uh, and professional and uh or whatever you want to emit from your presence <laughs> well yeah exactly yeah i think you know i think the professional one is is like an interesting one isn't it you know well, i guess it depends what you're doing doesn't it Professional yeah. is, you know, per person, depending on what they want to be professional about. But I know, like, for me, um, I'm okay with if, if other people curse in their music or, you know, talk about whatever they want in their music. But I know, for me, I'm not going to be talking about, you know, beating up women and stuff like that, because that's not really my thing. So when I, you know... Or, you know, that's just an example. But so when I'm like on my Twitter, you know, it's, you're not, not going to see a bunch of cursing and blunts and, you know, drug paraphernalia and all kinds of stuff because I'm not necessarily, I'm a real person. I'm not necessarily like squeaky clean, but I'm not trying to, <laughs> you know, be fake like that, you know, and like promote all this stuff that I'm not really involved in and all that. A lot of people I see it all the time. Well, I'm just put on a front, you know, well, it's sad almost. Yeah, and, and I think the thing is, you know, we have to go, to, we have to make that point as well, right? That, um, you know, your online presence or whatever you call it, and Daniel and I used to talk about this a lot, actually. Um, we haven't recently, but your online presence is your EPK now, isn't it, right? Yep. And, you know, uh, nobody, uh, nobody, well, you know, the first thing that a manager does or a promoter does or a, you know, uh, record label does it is Google you, right? And I and I heard the other day somebody I can't remember whether it was you were telling me naturally a while ago, Joe, but but I heard somebody the other day say you know that um, they'd had you know they had like a, a record deal you know impending, and one of the executives looked at their Facebook and went uh. uh <laughs> not in our record label you know uh the, you know didn't like the language didn't like you know what the person was saying you know and that was like end of uh electronic electronic press kit dawn yep um it's a um just i just saw a uh, dawn come up there with a, uh, a question yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um yeah which you know i don't even do musicians still have EPKs, um, Joe? I mean, I get, um, I get um, submissions all the time on Indie Music Plus. You know, I charge two dollars for people to submit their music, and it's surprising the range of things that I get when people submit. So, so like people, yeah, it'll go from all the way. Somebody will will go to my store, set up a profile, order the package to to submit to be a for a chance to be a featured artist and then not send me anything. Okay. All the way to yeah. somebody that has sweet professional reverb nation or whatever, you know, EPK or press kit that they have on it, on a, on a Dropbox or on a, um, on a website somewhere where I can download it and put it in a folder. And then everywhere in between, you know, I have some guys where it's like, you know, it's up with an MP3 attached to it. And it's like, what is this? <laughs> you know, do I know you? Yeah. So, yeah, Don says the band. I'm just trying to yeah. find it though. If they pay, that's the you just made me. Yeah, sorry, Joe. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, no. You just made me think of um, of uh, I can't remember his name now, but um, 
famous DJ, <laughs> famous, but I can't remember his name, famous DJ um, that we came across, um, Daniel, in the UK, who did a fantastic blog, and he was, like, talking about, um, you know, so obviously people yeah. would be sending him, yeah? Can, From can, BBC, yeah, but, but, yeah, I remember yeah. what you're talking about, and it just, it just popped my mind, because I also had uh, my um, radio program on RKC, I had uh, like a one season there, and yeah. uh, and and if if I may just add here that uh, musicians has to have to realize one more thing about submitting their music. Uh, whether if I I want or not, I don't have time to listen to uh, to give a chance more than like one song or something like this. And but usually after a while that I got a lot of a lot of music submitted. What I'm doing, I'm listening. I'm, I, the first decision comes after 15 seconds of, uh, of the song. And uh, if I decide that 50 seconds, the first 15 seconds are interesting enough, I'm giving a chance to one song. In very rare situations, and uh, you know, and then you hear about it from me all the time. I'm listening to the whole EP, and uh, the reason is that there are literally hundreds of thousands of bands. I have no chance whatsoever to listen to everyone. And even if I miss someone, because I, I heard just 15 seconds and I decided it's not it, but it is it, I don't care because I have enough that I will listen and they also will be it, you know? I don't care to miss one or two just to, to, to get, you know, to, to get going. I have enough material, good material to, to play on the radio show. And uh, it means that, you know, you know, when I'm looking for a band presence, the first thing that I'm looking for is to listen to the, those 15 seconds. So if I get to the site, the website, the Facebook page, Twitter page, no matter what, I need it in one click from it. If I have to now look where they put it and there is one link and then another link and a third link and maybe I will get to something, I'm not there, I'm not investing the time. But if I have on one click, the best effort by the band or the musician then they, they have a chance to, to to get my attention to play them on the radio and i think that is extremely important for emerging musicians to understand that they have one chance usually not longer than 15 seconds yeah i i, I if, I, if I could just pick up on that danny i think you're, again you're absolutely spot on you know and actually funnily enough right um, there was somebody sending me some uh, music and videos and stuff like that, you know, uh, just over the last few days and that. And, um, and I, you know, I basically like did 20 seconds on it. Like you said, right, you know, because obviously you, I mean, you and I both got into that habit, didn't we? You know, when we were, when we were searching for people to work with and Joe, you know, you've, you've done it. And, that, and, 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 and I'm, you know, I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. And it's amazing how quickly you get into that because you see so much stuff that you've got no option, but to just, to do, to do it very quickly in order to sort through all the rubbish and find the good stuff, you know. So, um, so, and and I said to this guy, and he said, "Well, you can't have listened to it." And I said, "Well, listen to the first twenty seconds. That was that, that told me all I needed to know, you know." And uh, I, I think that probably did upset him, you know. But I, I said, "Look, I'm sorry. That's just the way it is, man. You know, I've got, you know, uh, the first twenty seconds. I've got the gist of it, you know. And uh, and it's like, you know, and again, the first twenty, yeah." Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Joe, you know, and I don't even, you know, I'm not, you know, uh, you know, musically knowledgeable enough to, to say that, you know, but yeah, that's it. You know, I mean, I'm like listening for a short amount of time. I got, you know, I got it, you know, I mean, like, you know, uh, I went and watched a band the other day um, and, uh, you know, I, cu I, I couldn't be there long, you know, even if I wanted to be there. I went in, I watched it, I went, I got it. And the guy called me back and he called me after and he said, you didn't like it. I went, I loved it. And he, go, and he goes, what do you mean? You like left after, you know, you were gone after 30 minutes. I went, that's all I needed to see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, that's, it is terrible. It is terrible in a way, but it's reality, isn't it? Yep. When it I was doing reality. 
get label showcases for all like the major labels and stuff it was like you get four songs you know get up get up on stage set your stuff up play four songs get off and it's like the whole room's filled with record executives yeah. you know, and that's yeah that's what it is and, and, and you know, we, we've got some great um you know comments here from dawn and i don't know yeah. who creatives link is and all the rest of it you know but we've got some you know great comments here um agreeing and, and adding to what we're saying you know somebody saying that you know that thing that i'm always saying at the minute you know a picture is a thousand words and a video is a million you know uh somebody said something like that oh, yeah that's right um whoever creatives link is and um yeah. you know that's it man you know like like you said daniel it's like one quick one click or it's all over <laughs> sorry but that's the way it is you know and boy and boy by the way had that one click better be good you know i mean like the best effort that's the point yeah. that's the point because yeah. uh, uh the manager of uh, rkc was always like oh you're the best scout ever where do you find this music and actually I, i'm looking for this music i'm, I'm not waiting for um, bands to submit, then I'm browsing my Twitter account where uh, there are thousands of bands are following me. I'm browsing it one by one, so I don't. I'm, I'm sitting like one one hour and I'm listening to like 50 bands or 30 bands, yeah. something like this. It depends. And uh, and the point is that you won't believe how high quality bands I'm finding with like 100 followers on Twitter and like 50 likes on Facebook and uh, their best effort on YouTube, whether it's YouTube or SoundCloud, has like 40 plays. And you know, uh, it's sad in a way, but that's how it is. And uh, it's not one or two. Uh, yeah, that's the that's most of musicians are in. One of the way I, ways yeah, I judge it, one of the ways I judge submissions too as well is um, by like responsive rate. You know, if I don't hear from them in two weeks, then you know I'm may not be interested in featuring them anymore, you know, or whatever. And like, so it's just like in business or whatever. You know, the professional time to respond is like 24 hours or so. You know, so or you know, within a reasonable amount of time. So it's like if you submit somewhere and then you get a response, make sure you like respond as soon as possible, or else they might just move on and you know fill your spot. And and. You're right there, Joe. You see, and actually, right, what what one of the things I think you're alluding to right there is, you know, th there's like, um, you know, that that marketing adage or sales adage, which is like, you know, you need to send somebody a piece of information at least seven times, mm -hmm. right, before they're before you know um, they're they're likely to talk to you, right, and a lot of these things. Uh, don't actually carry over into the indie music world right which is like which is like fair enough actually because you know they're not digital marketers they're not marketers they're not salespeople. you know um so they they wouldn't know these things that we know right but you know you've got to learn them haven't you quick you know, and you've got to, you know, and there, there you talked about follow up, right? Um, which is, you know, the classic thing, you know, that they teach salespeople. You know, you have to follow up, right? Don't, don't just send them a piece of information and then leave it. Send them a piece of information, and then follow it up. Send them seven pieces of information. And then, you know. One thing, <laughs> one thing I've learned as a no, you're fine. One thing I've learned as a musician, being a musician, is that musicians are super lazy and super flaky. So, like, you know, that's what they want to do. They just want to put out that one thing and just, you know, just sit there. And I'm, I'm a rock star, and it's like, well, nobody's listening, though. And, oh, but it's out there. It's on iTunes. No, so? <laughs> yeah. It, it, like, it, 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 a car in a junkyard, you know, about your music, you know? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't cut it. I mean, you, you, you know from both sides joe that it doesn't cut it don't you now right um and um and and and, and i think the the reverse of it is when you get the ones that have done it right you go whoa 
<laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that that person's got it spot on, mm -hmm. <laughs> isn't it? You know. Uh, you know something? Uh, it's, it's interesting that you're mentioning it, uh, because I was just thinking uh, recently about it. Uh, I think that uh, the response uh, time and uh, and uh, engagement and uh, how how many times are you willing to try something? It, first of all, it gives a, a sense of uh, how really do you want to become a star? How really do you want to succeed? It doesn't have to be necessary to be a star, but you know, what, how it's burning inside. And uh, and most of those bands that you see, you know, like okay, just 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 uh, they put their music on iTunes and think that it will be it will do their uh, its thing alone, thing alone, but it won't. And uh, and people just simply like to see someone who really lives uh, his, his dream, you know. And it's sometimes it's hard, and you know, and then you're making the Bruce Springsteen. I'm sorry for mentioning it, but <laughs> but Bruce Springsteen started to play in a club that was totally empty. First gig he had 15 people, 17 people at the gig, and then a week after. It was fantastic, 24K, you know, like 24 people, he was excited, it's more than the last week. And we know who Bruce Springsteen is today, but without this effort, week after week, more and more people came, and that's where he got his uh, uh, nickname boss, because uh, he was just paying, you know, he was the one that he pays at the end of the week, pays salaries to other musicians. and. Without this kind of effort, he wouldn't be uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen today. You know, we wouldn't talk about it. And yeah. and and this kind of passion is something that people see. You cannot hide this passion, and you cannot fake this passion. And if you're not responsive, you're not passionate enough. If you're not willing to, you know, push your music forward, you're not passionate enough. People see it, and you're just not interested in it. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. I think that's kind of a good. We've been going about an hour, so we don't have to necessarily stop talking. But I'm going to stop recording, so I'm just going to do a little outro for the podcast. And we can hang out a little bit longer until everybody gets sick of uh, watching us talk. Okay. Or we get to... <laughs> All right. So this yeah. is the Indie Music Podcast. I'm JoJo Keys. We're going to be signing off. Thank you for listening to this special edition of Marketing Your Music with myself and Chris Finley, the digital marketing sales expert. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Have a great one.